Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now you know shit is getting serious when I have a default cube and a UV sphere. <laughs> I basically want to go over the shader AOV. Now AOV essentially means I think it's arbitrary output value. And we use this in Octane quite a lot, but obviously we're inside of cycles here. And I think EV supports this as well. But you can do a little bit of compositing and it kind of helps if you need to tweak later down the line. So it does come in handy. So I'll briefly go over this. What we need to do is we need to go to the view layers. Now I've selected the UV sphere here and I'll hit plus. Now I'm going to call this ID and I'll make it in capitals. And the reason for this is we need to keep the naming convention the exact same. So if I go into the shader or the material properties, what I can do is I can add an output. AOV and I can plug a lot of things into this now first of all let's name this ID so there's a few things I can actually do here the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down an RGB node and I'll just plug the color directly into the color for this and we'll make this green now when it comes to the default cube we could do the exact same thing we could add an output value and we could call this ID as well but I'm actually going to call this ID2 and I'm actually going to create another shader I'm going to call this ID2. And again, what I'll do here is I'll just grab an RGB value. I'll plug it into the color and I'll just make this purple, for example. And I'll just quickly hit F12 just to render, just to see what's happening. If we come up to the view layers, you'll notice in the top right, we now have ID and ID2. So if I check out, that's the green color that I was using or the green color that I had assigned. And if I go to ID2, I have this kind of purple color. And this is good if you want to maybe do masking or if you want to isolate a certain object. Now, it's not material IDs, it's not crypto mat, it's kind of your own shader. And I'll explain a little bit more in a second. But it does have its potential. So you could quickly change the color for this, for example, or you could use it as a mask. So it depends really what you need to do, especially if you're inside of After Effects or Photoshop or whatever. Or maybe you just want to randomly select objects. You could create like an RGB spinning wheel. Anyway. The next thing we can also do is we can also do something like a vertex color. Now I'm just going to quickly subdivide this just so I've got a little bit more geometry to work with. Uh, we'll hit apply. Let's put shade smoothing on and I'll quickly jump into the vertex paint and we'll just quickly paint this. We'll just paint it very bad. Oh, helps when we're in the right viewport, doesn't it? So we'll just do something like this. Yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> So we now have this vertex colour painted on. So what I can quickly do is I can quickly jump back into the render viewport. And if I actually go down to the data properties of the object, which is here, you can see that I now have a colour attribute, which is essentially the vertex map. So I can call this vertex. And what we can then do is we can use something like a colour attribute. So in the shader, I can search for a colour attribute. Helps when you can spell. And I can plug this into the color of the ID or the AOV output. And let's quickly select the name of it, which is Vertex in our case. Notice how the, these match up. Again, F12 to render. Let's quickly check this out. Uh, ID, ID, ID2. And there we go. We have the Vertex color as well. Now you can start to use this for baking. If you shoot the camera directly down, you could export out like a normal map or a roughness map or something like this. So the shader AOVs do come in handy for a lot of elements, especially when you go into the compositing tab. Yeah, let's enable use nodes. You can see that they're also here as well. So if you export out something like a multi EXR, you'll get all of this data inside of Photoshop. And that's pretty much shader AOVs. You can do a lot more with them, to be honest, but that's kind of the basic overview. Anyway, if you've got any questions, stick them down below. If I've made a mistake, which I probably have, stick it down below because you'll always tell me. Anyway, you know what to do. Take care.